Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Restaurants taking customers' phone numbers and more new rules from the state health department. We have reaction from lawmakers. Grant. Voters will decide next Tuesday whether law enforcement needs a warrant to check your cell phone. Coming up, we'll break down Proposition 2 on the ballot. All right, Grant, arrests and charges against two Southeast Michigan men linked to a white supremacist group, which the Attorney General is calling a gang. Off the top on Local 4 News at 6, Attorney General Dana Nessel says that group known as The Base terrorized a family in Dexter late last year. Their purported target, a podcaster they disagreed with. Arrests were made this morning in Bad Axe and Taylor. Jason Colthorpe joins us live with what we've just learned about the case. Jason? Kim, the base we know was formed in 2018, but it's not exclusive to Michigan. It has cells, according to the FBI, across the United States, and this is the second time in that span that its so-called leader has been arrested and charged by the feds. The actual crime occurred December 11th, 2019. Two men late at night walking around a home in Dexter, eventually taking this picture and later posting it to the internet. It was meant to be a threat to Daniel Harper. All right, and welcome to episode 41 of I Don't Speak German. Harper does a podcast exposing the inner workings and hate speech of neo-Nazi groups. But as it turns out, Harper didn't even live there. The Detroit Joint Terror Task Force investigation found the two men that night belonged to the base. The base is a white supremacy group that advocates violence and even trains to overthrow the government and to set up its own white society in the Pacific Northwest or the Upper Peninsula. Justin Watkins, believed to be the group leader from Bad Axe, and Alfred Gorman of Taylor were charged with three felonies related to the threat. The Anti-Defamation League was quick to respond to the charges today, saying, quote, there is no place in Dexter, no place in Michigan, and no place in the United States for this type of criminal and threatening behavior. We should also point out this is not the first time Harper has been targeted by white supremacists. Also in 2019, a couple of months before what took place in December, a man in Kansas was arrested and charged after posting instructions on how to burn the house down of what court documents said was someone known as D.H. That was later found to be Daniel Harper. Reporting live, Jason Colter, Local 4. Jason, thank you. Michigan is reporting a record high case count of 3,675 cases and we're getting reaction to some late breaking changes the state health department made this afternoon to its COVID guidelines and restrictions. And here is what's changed. No more than 50 people are allowed at indoor gatherings without fixed seating. So that is down from the limit that had been 500. Restaurants can continue offering indoor seating, but no more than six people per table. And bars and restaurants need to collect phone numbers from customers who dine in for purposes of contact tracing. For the reaction from lawmakers, let's go live to our business editor, Rod Maloney, with more. Rod. Yeah, Kimberly Devlin, you know, the legislature, especially the Republicans in the legislature, were expecting to have the opportunity to work with the governor after her executive orders were overturned by the Supreme Court. And they've been sort of waiting for that to happen. And they're still waiting. Today, the governor continued trying to do this on her own through her administration and the Department of Health and Human Services. So now the entire state of Michigan reverts back to phase four. All school children will be wearing masks, indoor gatherings limited, particularly in bars and restaurants. Today, in an interview with our Devin Skillian, the governor pointed out. These are some practical things that um, the department and our experts in public health uh, believe will help mitigate the incredible spread that we see happening right now. And so those will be included in the order as well as moving region six into phase four with the rest of the state. That is not a hit with Traverse City State Representative Jack O'Malley. He says today's orders will lead to confusion and perhaps trouble for business people. He's particularly concerned about the health department's requirement to have restaurants and bars take patrons' names and phone numbers to assist in contact tracing should there be a COVID outbreak. O'Malley worries about scenes like this one. You're not getting my phone number. Well, why not? You, now you got to leave. These are issues, you know, and do, and do they think this through? When they're making these rules, they sure don't talk to us uh, in, the in the House of Representatives and tell us uh, and ask our input. He believes there is a way to attack COVID and these kinds of orders are not the best answer. You need to paint with a, a fine brush, not a roller. 
uh, and we're painting with a roller. Now, Robert Gordon this afternoon addressed uh, a lot of these concerns, saying that they, these are all lawful orders uh, based on the Spanish flu law from 100 years ago. Uh, he also said the Constitution is not a suicide pact. Uh, but Jack O'Malley is telling me tonight that he thinks there are going to be a lot more legal challenges to this stuff in the days to come. Reporting live in West Bloomfield, Rod Maloney, Local 4. Be following it. Okay, Rod, thank you. And as we mentioned, the latest COVID numbers from the state are troubling. Record high, 3,675 new cases, along with 41 more Michiganders having lost their lives to the virus. Also a record high, the number of active cases in the state right now stands at 48,200. And more than 75 Northville public school students are in quarantine after two students at the high school tested positive following out of school homecoming parties. For some perspective on that Northville situation, we turn to our medical expert, Dr. Frank McGeorge. And Frank, amazing how just two cases can lead to 75 students being quarantined here. Yeah, exactly. You know, from the description of the circumstance, it sounds like they might have gotten out easy. Of course, there still might be more identified over time. Keep in mind, these incidents are really important reminders of how seriously we need to take any group events, whether it is a party or an athletic event. Close, unprotected contact, it puts you and everyone that you're exposed to at risk. And these quarantines are really necessary to prevent additional spread after people were exposed at high-risk events. And it's really important to note this does not only affect the people that were directly exposed. There is a ripple effect. Every time a new case is identified out of that first exposure, it triggers more quarantines. And that's why while we are still trying to contain the spread, it is always going to be smarter to limit the number of people that you come in close, unprotected contact with. There is a real risk of becoming infected, but there is also a more practical point that by exposing yourself, you could have to undergo a fairly disruptive quarantine. Back to you. Yeah, all right. Thanks, Dr. McGeorge. And a reminder that we're taking an in-depth look at this pandemic and its impact on our lives, including the election, education, and racial disparities. It's tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Join Devin, myself, Dr. McGeorge, and the rest of the Local 4 team for this special hour dedicated to COVID-19. Five days to go now. Michigan still the focus of both presidential campaigns. Today, Dr. Jill Biden making stops in East Lansing and Westland in support of her husband, Joe Biden. And President Trump's son, Eric, making two stops in Lansing and Granville. And his sister, Tiffany, holding a breakfast event this morning in Birmingham. Now, tomorrow afternoon, President Trump will be back in the state holding a rally at Oakland County International Airport in Waterford. And then the next day, on Saturday, Joe Biden will be holding a rally here in Michigan, and that one will be along with former President Barack Obama. According to an AP report, President Trump will be holding a rally in Sterling Heights on Sunday, though there is no confirmation on that yet from the campaign. Again, that from the Associated Press. State of Florida takes center stage today in the race for the White House. Democratic nominee for President Joe Biden holding a campaign rally in Tampa. He spoke to supporters in Broward County as well, the first of two socially distanced drive-in events. President Trump also in Florida today for a campaign rally. President speaking to a tightly packed, we would have to note mostly maskless crowd of thousands in Tampa. The Trump campaign postponing though tonight's rally in Fayetteville, North Carolina due to problems with the weather. So a pair of issues on the ballot next week could change the state Constitution. One of them would make changes to the why uh, to the way I should say law enforcement have to handle searching things such as cell phones and laptops. Our Grant Herms is here with a breakdown. Grant. Proposition 2 was on the ballot after a unanimous vote by both the House and Senate to put it there. And while there's no formal opposition to it, there are some arguments against it. The proposal is simple. It would prohibit unreasonable searches or seizures of electronic data and communication and require a search warrant for that data, the same way the government currently needs to get a search warrant to search a person's home or seize someone's things. For years, police have used technology with names like Stingray or Hailstorm to collect broad data from cell phones. But increasingly, how and when that technology is used has come under scrutiny, particularly this summer as protesters decried alleged gathering of cell phone data by law enforcement. This is needed because we don't know what technology is down the road in the future. And this just strengthens our own constitution. And that way we don't have to rely on the federal courts like we have before. 
While the measure is backed by the Michigan State Police, there have been concerns raised the measure could impede the work of law enforcement. Just last month, a report from the State House Fiscal Agency wrote the proposition could make it more difficult for Michigan law enforcement officials and agencies to investigate cybercrime and enforce cybercrime laws, for example, internet sex trafficking and child pornography. <laughs> But supporters say there are ways to investigate those crimes without having to violate rights. What's important is that people's personal privacy is protected. And if that means that law enforcement needs to show good reason and probable cause for accessing our private technology and communications, that's a good thing. If it were to pass, Michigan wouldn't be alone. More than a dozen other states either have similar laws on the books or have similar legislation pending right now. In Detroit, Grant Herms, Local 4. Okay, Grant, a former music professor at the University of Michigan has been indicted on charges that he took a minor across state lines to engage in sexual conduct. 67-year-old Stephen Ships was arraigned this afternoon on child exploitation charges. From 1989 to 2019, Ships was employed by the University of Michigan School of Music, Theater, and Dance as a violin professor. The indictment alleges that on several occasions in 2002, Ship traveled with a girl under age, under the age of 18, across state lines for sexual activity. If convicted, Ships faces up to 15 years in prison. The gray clouds are just dominating once again. We had a short break, but couldn't keep it. Ben? Yeah, we do have more sunshine later in the forecast, guys, but Zeta stayed south. Rain coming in off Lake Huron. We'll look at what that means for tonight's forecast next. What was Hooper and the Pistons doing in Commerce Township recently? Oh, look at that jersey. The fashion show for a cause next on Local 4.